Hello, hello. Welcome everybody, and I hope you are having a good week. Uh, this is Thanksgiving week, uh, so happy Thanksgiving to all of you and your family. Um, I hope it's a good one. Tonight we're going to be revisiting uh, a class that we did uh, last year around this time. It wasn't a Thanksgiving class or anything like that, um, but it was making holiday bowls and, and, and everything, chips and dips and bowls and trays and stuff. Uh, some new new designs, of course. We're gonna we're gonna look back because we do have you know a lot's changed in the year. We do have some uh, newcomers uh, to the Spindle TV channel, and uh, they they most likely have not had a chance to uh, see these videos or these types of projects and things. So I want to revisit that and uh, go from there. So <clears throat> one of the things uh, that we can <clears throat> take a look at, uh, we'll jump over to the other side here um, and we'll get right into it I, I believe I'm running late so we don't need to really wait for anyone uh, it's uh, 718 so we'll get started here in just a moment uh, I want to welcome everybody and uh, if I miss your name and all but um, uh, Roger Donnie uh, William David Ronald everybody hello and uh, Jay's 85 all right uh awesome for uh watching the videos and this being your first live class cool uh be sure to participate uh ask questions and everything uh, that's what we're here for to help you guys and girls learn so with that being said let's go ahead and jump on in to uh, our projects let's get over to the vetric software and jump in <clears throat> Ooh, what's that all right on the screen uh, you'll see uh, basically a sample um, larger uh, kind of a centerpiece type uh, chip and dip bowl that we can that we're going to be working with uh, we're going to look at uh, this design there's a couple of things we need to add to it and uh, and all but uh, just to give you a kind of a general idea of uh, one of the things um, that we'll be working on so let's go ahead and let's get back over here I'm gonna throw this uh, these vectors I'm gonna select all them and I'm gonna move them to a new layer and I'm just gonna call this layer joy because we're gonna come back and talk about that in a moment and I don't need the layer visible right now I want to kind of blank everything out uh, so I'm just gonna click OK now as far as our job setup in the beginning here let's get back to the beginning over here as far as our job setup, this is going to be a single-sided project because we're making chip and dip bowls and things. Um, as far as the project size, it's really going to come down to uh, what size you would like your uh, chip and dip bowl to be and what size material uh, you're going to require to cut the project out of that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with uh, 14 inches is going to be plenty wide enough uh, for me uh, because uh, that would you know that, that should meet all my needs I'm gonna up up uh, ramp up the height a little bit I'm gonna go about 12 inches and then the thickness uh, generally we don't want to you know we don't want these boards being real thin they're bowls and all so we're gonna go with an inch and a half uh, basically the easy one you know the easy ways uh, to do that um, is we could take two three quarter inch pieces of material and you know glue them together to create our inch and a half uh, we can go bigger, you know, two inches, uh, depending on how deep you want your bowls and things. Um, I usually, on the CNC, uh, I usually don't go uh, over two inches thick uh, with my bowls and all. They're usually right around inch and a half thick, and that's plenty for uh, chip and dip trays. Aloha, Larry. <clears throat> and so uh, for this, uh, I will. It's, we're going to go with 14 by 12 uh, inch and a half thick. Now... Again, I explained this at the beginning of every video, but I work off of a jig. I have a wedge jig that kind of holds my material and everything. Uh, so therefore, I reference off of the bed of that jig, of that, that uh, uh, waste board, basically. So that's referenced in the Z0 position as the machine bottom, the bottom of my material, what my material is sitting on. And I touch off to my jig base, basically. Um, you can work off the top not a problem at all I just this is my setup uh, use the appropriate setup for yourself that you would want to use 
And because I do use my jig, uh, I work off the bottom left corner, uh, XY datum. That's where it's referenced off of. That's where my fence is on this jig, uh, this wedge jig. And But again, you can reference and work off any position that you want. So uh, it does not have to be my settings or setup at all. You set it up for your machine and what you're used to and what you're comfortable with. Now, with that being said, I'm going to click OK and uh, that'll get us started with our project. Now, uh, it's saying that I have toolpaths and that I've made changes in my job setup. Do I want to recalculate them? No, because I'm going to end up removing and deleting them. And I will do that now because we're going to create them again <clears throat> at the end. All right. Take a sip of Dr. Pepper and then we'll get going. Now, uh, for this first part, we're going to actually, I'm going to, I, I got a couple of graphics to start off with. Hey, Jimmy, welcome. Um, but I got a couple of graphics to start off with and uh, I want to build some bowls off of that. Before we get started, just so you guys have a reference of what I'm referring to when I say bowls and things like that, let's go into my files and let's go into my. Uh, documents and I should have a folder I should have a folder here bear with me a second uh, actually it's in this drive uh, called a simple design CAD and if I go into chip and dip and let's look at some of the chip and dip bowls and trays that we did last year so Last year, um, let it pop up. It's going to take a second. Pop up. There we go. Uh, that's not the bowl. Hold on a second. Let me find uh, my proof images. Oops, oops, oops. Wrong one. There we go. You're going to see uh, Vetric pop up again with the football. We don't want that. What I want is... All right, so we did a, uh, a sports-related chip and dip bowl. And it's going to buffer while these files are opening, guys. So bear with that buffering. It's going to buffer while my files are opening. Uh, so bear with that for a moment. Um, but we did a football, kind of a go team project. We did a little, uh, well, this could be two things. It could be a ghost or it could be an angel uh, with wings and all. Uh, I'm going to call it a ghost because it was kind of right around Halloween. We did a pumpkin, a uh, pumpkin chip and dip bowl. And we did a Christmas tree. Now, these files and projects are actually available. These Vetric files and projects are actually available uh, in the digitalwoodcarver.com website under the training uh, menu uh, in the training if you scroll all the way down you will see chip and dip uh, bowls and you'll see project files for uh, Vetric and, and Aspire and you just download the appropriate file and uh, you'll have all of these uh, project files that I'm showing you now uh, so these were the projects uh, the chip and dip bowls that we did last year and um, we're gonna now come in and we're gonna create some new ones hey welcome David uh, thank you for joining me. Glad it's your first time. Hopefully it is a pleasurable experience. So what we're going to do is let's, let's, let's bring in our um, clip art that we're going to trace. So let's go into the trace bitmap tool, which is found under the file operations. It is the last icon here. It is the trace bitmap tool. And we're going to go into the uh, desktop. And I should have a folder called class file. And I've got three different projects here. I've got a Santa, I've got a silhouette of a deer's head, and I've got a kind of a holiday advent wreath. Uh, that one's going to, the advent wreath is going to require a little bit of work. And uh, so we'll do that one last. But let's, uh, let's drop into old um, Santa or the reindeer. Let's see, let's start with Santa. And let's bring him in. Now I'm going to trace out the outline of old Saint Nick here. And uh, we're going to go into the trace bitmap tool is found under the create vectors menu. First icon, last row, trace bitmap. 
And for this, I'm going to turn the fading off. My bitmap fading, always slide it to none so we can see our full glorious color. And I'm not using the color trace. I could, you know, because I only have a few colors that I need to check off. But I'm going to use the black and white. And I'm just going to slide the slide bar uh, to a point where I get a nice definition on my outline here and everything. And from there, I'm going to turn my noise filter up to about 7 because of the fact that I'm not sure uh, how much pixelation is in this image. This will be the first time working with this image. So I'm going to turn the noise filter up to about 7. And I am using the default corner fit on this trace. So we'll go ahead and click on preview and we'll get that trace outline. Looks really good there. All right, so now we can apply that and close this tool. Now, once I'm done tracing, I can go over here and turn my bitmap layer off. And if uh, you're in 8 or 8.5, your layers uh, is over located over here or your actual layer tab is down below. Uh, if you're in 9, 9.5, and I believe 8.5, it might have been 9 and 9.5, but they added a view bar and we can access our layers from the top here. So I'm just going to turn that light bulb off for that bitmap layer to hide the image. All right, so now as I trace this image, all the vectors are currently grouped together. We can tell that by when I click on it, it's all gets selected. So we need to ungroup that. So over here in Edit Objects, we have Ungroup and Group. So we need to ungroup it. And also a keyboard shortcut for that is U. U for Ungroup, G for Group if you want to use your keyboard shortcut. So now I can go ahead and select what I don't want and get rid of it and just have my outline here. Now I need to determine, uh, you know, with this, what size I want. Now I got to remember, this is kind of basically be the inside of my bowl. And this is how I consider this uh, to be the inside of my bowl here. And so I'm eventually going to um, do an offset here that's going to create kind of the rim of the bowl or the lip and stuff. Uh, so let's look at our job size here under the transform objects menu. Let's look at the size of our object currently. And right now it's uh, five by seven. Now I do work off the X axis as being the height of my board, the long length of my board. So this will eventually get rotated 90 degrees, but I'd like it to be comfortable for you guys and girls uh, being able to see it upright. So you don't have to kind of tilt your head sideways on some of this stuff. So, uh, for this, uh, five inches by seven inches, that's a small, uh, interior bowl. It's not going to hold very many chips or candy or anything right now. So let's go ahead and let's scale this up some. And I'm just going to go with a height of 12 inches. I'm just going to round that up to 12 inches. Now, that being said, my height here is only 12 inches to work with. And if I would go with the 14, I'd have plenty of room uh, if I went ahead and rotated this 90 degrees. But again, I want it to be comfortable for you guys to look at. So I'm just going to go over real quick and change my job setup. And I'm just going to make that 12 of 14 for right now. And uh, we'll rotate everything at the end. All right, so now I've got plenty of room. Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and reselect our guy and let's get him centered. This is the transform objects menu where we move, size, rotate, mirror, and copy, distort, and align. So the alignment tool, the last icon, we're going to align to our material and we're going to click on this middle button here to center it. All right, now on a keyboard, uh, keyboard shortcut, that's also uh, the F9 key is uh, to center to your material, uh, keyboard shortcut for that. Little hot tip there. Uh, welcome, uh, Roy and Howard. How are you guys doing? Now, <clears throat> all right. So now I need to determine uh, how how much of a lip, uh, basically, uh, I want around my bowl. And that's going to be uh, my offset. So let's go to our offset and layout tools and open up the offset tool over here. And let's take a think about this for a second. I'd like to have, I'd like to have uh, about a half inch, about a half inch lip. So let's take a look at that. We'll go half inch and um, click offset. 
Yeah, that's going to be good. So the space between this vector and this vector, that's going to be my uh, bowl rim, I guess we would call it. And then the inside area here is going to be the pockets. Now, of course, not all of this is going to be pockets. We're going to draw in some bowl areas and things and stuff uh, and um, kind of go from there. Uh, one of the things I'd like to look at is um, when we offset, when we offset this outward, we got this little uh, nub piece right here that was created and all. Well, we don't need that. We don't want that in there. So let's go ahead and select it and delete it, get rid of it, any kind of noise like that. Now also uh, between old St. Nick's uh, legs here is kind of a little space. Now we could leave that in and uh, create like a small shallow pocket just to give that impression of an indention there. Um, it all depends on if we have our bowl kind of follow the contour. But this whole area is going to be a bowl. I want chips to go all in here. So this part right here is going to be irrelevant. And it's going to kind of, you know, take away from space of our bowl. And uh, I want my Doritos to fit. So we're going to go ahead and just for now, we're going to get rid of that as well. Okay, so we've got our little outline there. Now, um, keeping in mind that, uh, you know, this is all going to be pocketed out and I'm going to be using a bowl bit. I'm going to be, here, here's the three bits that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. The quarter inch end mill is going to do my profile cut and also it's going to do the rough cut. It's going to hog away. Uh, the waste material in the pocket area here where my bowl is. Uh, but then I'm going to come back with a bowl bit, a bowl and tray bit, a small uh, bowl and tray bit, the white side 1370. Uh, and I'm just going to do kind of a bowl cut on the inside here to get a nice radius in the bottom of the pocket. And then I'm, I want to round off my edges and stuff, and I'd like to use my roundover bit for that, a white side 2050. It's a little eighth inch roundover just to kind of break the edges. Now, I don't necessarily have to use the roundover bit. I can absolutely, you know, break the edges with sanding and things like that. Uh, but I happen to have the bit. It's a white side 2050, eighth inch roundover. And so I'd like to take advantage of it um, uh, since I have it. Uh, and then uh, it'll give me some less sanding to do uh, as far as uh, breaking these edges and everything. And it'll give me a nice finished look. So what I want to make sure of, and one of the things I got to make sure of, is that, you know, when I'm uh, doing this round over and everything, I've got some areas here that I've got to be careful when I round over. Uh, depending on how much I round over and all, I may lose some of this here. And so the question is, is if I were to remove some of this vector here and kind of shorten it up, does it take away from my bowl? Does it take away from my design um, and all? But before I go into removing anything, I just want to create the tool pass and see what everything looks like. So as far as creating the actual bowl, um, I mean, I could just leave it as it is right here and just let all of this area in here get pocketed out, even up into the arm and the hand. Um, I could pick just certain areas, you know, uh, within here for it being a bowl. And I could separate another area and kind of make like a, a separate tray, uh, bowl and tray. Uh, you know, or another bowl area. I could have some kind of a divider and almost like right around his waistline, I could have a divider there and that would be like his belt, right? You know, or something like that. Uh, so I want to kind of look at the bowl at hand and see and see what, what I want to do. Because I may want to come in here, depending on if I were to draw a circle, if I were to come somewhere generally in here and were to draw a circle, if I come out to about the inside of there, Right now, I'm roughly about a one inch diameter in, in there. And so the question is, is um, would, would that be a nice place um, to, uh, for like a little dipping bowl or something? Uh, is, it, is one inch diameter 
uh, too small for a, one of those little ceramic dipping bowls or something? Or so, should I just go ahead and just pocket the whole thing out and just fill this sucker up with Hershey's and candy and what have you? Um, I think one inch is going to be too small for a ceramic bowl area. So I'm going to just kind of get rid of that. And although it's a novel idea to create two separate bays here, um, we actually can do it with two different designs. We can have one where all of this is pocketed out or one where it's where you've got a divider around the belt line. And we'll do both. We'll see how both of them look. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to let's draw in the divider. Uh, so assuming that old St. Nick uh, has got this bag over his shoulder and everything and that his jacket kind of starts to flare out here, I'm going to assume that at the bottom of this flare, uh, roughly, is about where his belt is and everything. And so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create a divider. Now, right now, I'm about five-eighths of an inch thick. Uh, I don't necessarily need that th that thick. I'm going to go a half inch and uh, click OK. And what I need to do is um, kind of get my positioning. So we'll go right about here. And uh, this area is going to not, you know, not be uh, cut. And so what I need to do is basically kind of separate this inner vector using this rectangle. Before I do that, because I do want to carve the whole thing out as a pocket for one bowl, I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to make a copy of this to a new layer. And I'm going to call this, uh, I'll call this uh, Santa Undivided. I, I, it's as good as name as any, right? Santa Undivided. So we'll go there and we'll copy that. Um, that way I, I'll have that vector there when I need. Now with this, we're going to go ahead and do some trimming. So I'm going to use my interactive trim tool and I'm going to trim this line here, this line, this line here, and this line. Okay. Essentially, I've kind of created two uh, bowl areas. Think of it like that. Uh, and what I'd like to do is kind of soften up these corners a bit. They're a little too sharp. So let's go into our fillet tool, our fillet tool. And we're going to put a curve on here. Now, the 1370 bowl bit um, has a, if I'm not mistaken, it's a quarter inch diameter. Let's take a look and let's see what we've got here. So let's move uh, over to a blank Google screen and let's go to white side 1370 I'm going to go over to images and so the uh, 1370 if we come over here to old uh, Holborn's uh, image here it has an overall cutting width of 7 sixteenths. It's got a cutting height of 3 eighths of an inch, and it's got a radius of an eighth of an inch round over. So uh, this 3 eighths of an inch is kind of what I'm looking at. And so that means uh, basically uh, the radius of this bit is um, 3 sixteenths, right? 3 eighths. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 7 sixteenths divided by 2 is whatever it is. We'll do the math in the, in the Vetrix software. That's what I love about this. So 716 is kind of my magic number. All right, let's, um, let's come over here and I'm going to go 716. Hit equals to get that fraction. And I'm going to divide that by two and hit that equal sign again to get my radius that I want. And I'm just going to do a normal fillet here and I'm going to round over these edges just kind of smooth them over uh, probably this one too and let's go ahead and knock that one down a bit too as well all right so uh, now we've got some you know just some basic you know radiuses now of course you know I could go through and uh, knowing that I'm going to use a bowl and tray bit uh, I could go through and knock these out because I don't think my bit's going to fit in some of these areas, right? We got to be, we got to be, 
concerned with that and stuff if we are going to bowl these out. But I think, I think, I think I should be okay. Let's find out. Let's take and draw a 3 8 inch diameter circle. And let's look and see here. So, nope, not going to fit in there, right? You know, so it's not going to fit in there because this little ball is just about the same size as that. So, um, do I need to do any modification or do I just need to limit the cut to kind of cut around here? You know, I kind of like the... Um, you know, we can look at the beard. You know, there's still, there's some areas and all that it's not going to get to. Now, mind you, I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill to pocket this out. And do I necessarily want to come and round it all off? I think what I'm going to do is, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this out a little bit. Kind of give uh, old Santa's cap a little bit bigger of a ball. And um, then we'll just, we'll, we'll leave it at that. So we did a little modification. So let's do that. Let's go into node editing here. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these nodes and I'm just going to bump them down and over a little bit. And then I'm going to take, let's see here. Uh, let's take, let's take these nodes and I'm going to use my right arrow key and just kind of bump them out. I got to fix my ball here in a minute. It's looking a little funky. Widen that up a bit. And then I'm going to grab this old anchor right here underneath this node and kind of see if I can get some roundness back here. I'm actually going to delete this point. Let's zoom in and delete, right click and delete that point, and then just kind of pull this out a little bit. I don't want it too perfect of a circle because it's supposed to be a kind of a squishy bowl. Now, <clears throat> with that being done, um, you know, I should have room in here uh, to clear out, but this little nub right here isn't doing anything for me, you know. So what I want to do is clean this up just a little bit more. Let's take old Santa. Let's see here. Let's go into node editing. And And then I'm going to delete that point. Over here, this guy accidentally got pulled out, so I'm going to delete him. And uh, now I should be, you know, okay for my radius to come in there. All right, so it didn't it didn't hurt the uh, design too too much. Uh, it, it still looks okay. Uh, now is let's get out of node editing mode and let's come over here to old Saint Nick's beard. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to, bum, 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 bum. I really want to use my bowling tray bit. So, um, I'm just going to let that kind of, uh, cut as far as it'll go and let the software kind of determine that. And because I'm going to be doing a round over and I'll be okay that the beard area, uh, is it going to fit? <clears throat> All right. So with that being said, let's go create some tool paths and see what kind of, uh, changes we need to make. Um, thank you, Donnie. Very good. Donnie, Donnie's jumping all on it, boy, uh, with the radius. Okay. So, um, let's go into the first tool path is going to be my rough cut of my pocket cut. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it on both of these areas here. And it's going to be my quarter inch end mill. And I'm going to cut this down. Uh, it's, a, it's an inch and a half material. 
uh, I'm probably gonna go about 0.625 inches deep uh, 5 eighths of an inch is deep with that and I'm gonna let it offset cut and I'm gonna go ahead and calculate that toolpath okay let's preview that uh, I'm not showing the tool for time's sake and everything I'm not animating the preview uh, so uh, let it run through and then it'll show us the finished pocket okay so here's my pocket area not too bad not too bad all right so now from there uh, I need to uh, take my bowl bit now and just run along the edge here uh, to give myself that radius so that's gonna be a profile cut uh, I'm gonna do a profile cut now what I could have um, yeah, we'll do it as a profile. I was about to say, what I could have done is offset this in and, and did a little bit of a pocket area, but we'll do a profile cut. It's going to be fine. Again, 0.625 uh, for the depth of cut. And for my bowl bit, now you guys and girls uh, had the opportunity, hopefully, to watch the video I posted uh, last week, just uh, how to add a form tool to uh, our tool database. Well, I don't have a bowl bit in here. I do not have the 1370 bowl bit in here. Uh, I just got it recently, so um, I need to add that tool to the tool database before I can use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick minute. You're going to actually get to see adding a form tool to the uh, tool database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, with a 375 inches wide by 7 or tall, should I say. That should be 0.375 should be there and 7 sixteenths equals 4375 to create my rectangle and then I'm going to come over to my radius tool here and I want an eighth inch radius so we'll click apply and that'll give me my radius here and now uh, on my fillet tool, I'm going to come back up in here and I'm going to type in 0.125, too many decimal points. And I'm going to come over to these corner here and I'm going to turn that radius off uh, on that corner because I want to go into node editing mode and I want to cut the vector on this corner and right here in the middle, I want to cut it because we only need the right side profile of the bit when we're adding a form tool to our tool database. So we're gonna go into our tool database and we're gonna open that up with our vector selected first before we open it. So make sure you select your vector. And under Imperial Tools, I'm gonna to go New Form Tool and create my bowl bit here. Uh, I'm going to stick with the uh, defaults except for this is a little uh, I want to go at least I'll go an eighth of an inch on the past step <clears throat> on that and uh, 45 and 15 is gonna be good uh, nice and slow and steady wins the race so I'm gonna call this my WS white side 1370 bowl bit and click apply add it to my tool database and click OK now I can come in with my profile toolpath I can get rid of this guy I don't need him anymore but now I can come in and I can select my vectors and again I'm gonna go 0.625 I'm gonna select from my tool database my new bowl bit and I want to be on the inside of the cut inside of the cut and um, I could get myself a little bit of an allowance uh, to go through and kind of trim but I don't want to do that because it'll create a lip so we'll go zero offset on that inside of the cut and we'll just calculate this I'm gonna just call this my bowl cut and it's the 1370 All right, so let's preview that selected 
full path. Okay, I am going to have to offset slightly. I am going to have to offset slightly because my quarter inch end mill went to the rim. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's give ourselves a little bit of an offset. So we're just skimming off a little bit of material. We're going to go uh, negative, negative, hmm. If I got an eighth inch radius uh, on there, I want to get into that radius. So I'm going to go negative an eighth of an inch. And let's calculate that toolpath again. And let's take a look at our 2D view so you guys and girls can see what's all happening here. Um, because I'm offsetting outward, I don't. I actually don't think I need to go an eighth of an inch. That's a little bit much. I'm going to probably go a sixteenth. Um, but notice that uh, overbite, what it's doing here to my hat and everything. And so when that bowl cut comes... Uh, because of that overlap, I'm kind of losing all of this. All of this will be gone. Uh, it'll be milled completely away. So let's back that off a little. Let's back that off a little bit. Or I may go back in and offset my pocket cut inward a little. And, uh, yeah. That's going to be the smart play. All right, guys, we're going to back up for a second. We're going to go back into our pocket cut here uh, with our uh, quarter inch end mill. And what we're going to do is on these vectors that are selected, I'm going to offset those inward an eighth of an inch. Too many decimal points. That's going to be the smart play. Uh, and I'm going to offset inward and that vector that's selected, that new vector that's selected, that's what I'm going to calculate this quarter inch end mill pocket cut on. Yeah, that'll be the smart play. Now, now I can create my toolpath on my regular uh, pocket here. No offset necessary. No offset necessary. I want to be on the inside of the cut and calculate. So let's take a look at these tool paths and see what we end up with. Hey Wayne, welcome. Glad you could make it. All right, yeah, that's gonna be the smart play for me. I get my nice radius uh, lower edges, you know, inside that bowl. Nice transition, those nice radiuses and all. And I'm not sacrificing my uh, detail there on the pocket. All right. Now, I want, I want to round over the top edges as well. And for that, I'm going to use my white side 2050 tool. Um, to round over these edges. Now, when I round over the edges, I have the sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna lose a little detail here on the left side, and I'm gonna lose a little detail here, right here where the ball and bag meet. If that happens, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and redraw my vector and just lower this bag definition a little bit, uh, you know, uh, to give myself a little bit more meat right here. Um, and, uh, but let's find out, let's find out, let's see how we do. So on that same vector, which is, uh, you know, my pocket vector there, uh, remember this was the offset for the uh, quarter inch pocket cut. Uh, but on my same vector here, uh, let's go ahead and create a profile toolpath. And for this toolpath, the white side roundover bit uh, has, let's, let's pull that bit in here so uh, you can see here. Uh, from the inside of the cutter to the outside of the cutter, that's an eighth inch, okay? 
And so that's what I'm going to step over. But from the bottom of the bit to the top of the round over here, that is a quarter of an inch. So that's what my cut depth is going to be, is a quarter of an inch, 0.25. And I'm going to be on the inside of the cut. And I'm going to step over that eighth of an inch. Uh, imagine if we had, you know, uh, we're rounding off our corners. The cutter, if I don't have any offset, is cutting on the outside. Uh, I'm going to step over uh, that line an eighth of an inch. So I'm right on the inside of that cutter where that round over is to knock over the corners and everything. I don't know if that helped illustrate it any, but we're going to step over negative 0.125. And we're going to call this our uh, pocket round over RO and that's my 2050 tool so we're gonna calculate oops gotta select vectors we're gonna calculate that toolpath now let's take a look at the 2d view and I've got the solid view turned on I've got the solid view turned on here I can go wireframe or solid and what the solid view do view does for me is it shows me where uh, you know my uh, bit is cutting and everything. And so I have a feeling that this is going to be a complete round over when it's all done and said said and done. So let's take a look. Let's kind of focus in on that area and everything. These two areas right here are what I'm focusing on uh, when I go ahead and preview this selected toolpath. Okay, so as you can see here, let's kind of uh, zoom in on that. As you can see here, there's a couple of things that happen. One, one is uh, round over left me with just very little meat right here. So I'm going to redraw this. I'm going to give myself some, I'm going to pump this up a little bit. Uh, over here, where his beard and the kind of the arm is and everything, um, the... Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, where the roundover bit couldn't get into, uh, but the, or not the roundover bit, I'm sorry, the bowl bit where it couldn't get into, uh, in these areas and everything, all of these white areas here that you see, kind of these shallow pockets, uh, that's where the roundover bit is cutting, you know, down a quarter of an inch. And uh, since its radius is smaller, the bit diameter, you know, at the bottom, is smaller than my bowl bit was, uh, it's actually removing that material there down a quarter of an inch for the depth of cut. So we have that as well to contend with. Uh, and so we can see a couple of areas even down here below on the inside. So let's take a the opportunity, and this is the first time working with this vector. This is right off the raw, so I didn't pre-plan anything. Let's take a look at this very closely. So in the thumb area... In the thumb area, need to think about uh, widening that up a bit, or at least taking my end mill and kind of coming in and uh, cleaning some of this stuff up. Um, in the arm here, definitely right here and definitely right here where the bag is, I want to clean up. And then a couple of areas around the kneecaps and, and uh, the lower of the waist. All right. So let's go in and let's kind of clean up some things. I'm going to take and I'm going to delete the inside vector, my offset cut, just for a moment because I'm about to redraw this and so it's going to require creating new offsets and stuff. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm just basically on these uh, this span here. I'm going to go through and zoom into it. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and just start selecting all these points. I could draw a box around them, but I'd end up grabbing this ball area here. So I'm going to grab this, all of these points here, including these down here. And I'm just going to use my down arrow, kind of bring them down some. And... 
what I'm actually going to do is with those selected, let's come in here. I'm going to delete this point and this point. I'm going to go ahead and select these points again. And I'm going to hit the letter D on my keyboard and delete them. What this will do is give me kind of a straight line that I'm going to turn into a Bezier curve. And that way I can kind of, uh, you know, adjust my curve a little bit. So I'm just changing the shape of Santa's bag uh, just a little bit there. Now, over here in the thumb area, uh, my three-eighths of an inch couldn't quite get into it. Uh, so as you can see right there in that tip, it's kind of getting, uh, you know, uh, milled down. So all I'm going to do is just kind of widen the thumb out a bit. Give him a swollen thumb. Here now, uh, this is this is a problem altogether. And old Santa's giving us a hard time. So, but we, you know, we're gonna do what we gotta do. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring his arm in just a little bit more. Here, I'm gonna bring his arm in a little bit more, and I'm gonna kind of round off the beard. He doesn't necessarily need such a big old beard coming off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and zoom in on this node here. we got to move on to our other project, so we need to get this done. And I'm just going to use my right arrow key and kind of bump it down. And if I were to select these anchor points and everything as I'm moving, it will move all of them. Okay, and let's get rid of that big old swoop. All right, and then on his beard and all, I'm just going to take and delete that point. And that should give me, I should have enough. Um, <clears throat> I should have enough room there. All right. So now looking at, uh, you know, up here in the top of his hat area, right at his head, uh, basically this little nub right here, I just need to I'm going to delete that point, delete that point, and I'm going to turn this into an arc and just kind of come right about there. All right, so visually overall doesn't affect it, but it makes a big difference. Now in his wrist uh, here, same thing, same thing. Uh, I'm going to just delete this point and um, that alone, just by doing that alone, that's going to give me, you know, what I need to clean that up. Uh, same thing here. If I come down here on uh, his hip area, I'm going to just take these two points and hit the letter D on my keyboard. I'm going to turn them into an arc. Not that big of an arc. I'm just going to kind of pull that back a little bit and um, just round that off. So let's look here. Um, These small ones, uh, these small ones here, I'm really almost not too concerned with them. I could chisel clean them up if I wanted to, but this one right here is a good little bit of meat. I'm not really worried about this area back here. Uh, this, this one here is a good pretty bit of meat on that back leg. So let's go over and clean that up. Uh, that would be right here on this point. And for this, again, I'm going to select these two nodes and I'm going to delete the point. And then I'm going to turn this into a Bezier curve instead of an arc. And I'm just going to let this flow uh, back out again. Just like that. Okay. 
and should be okay. Now that I've done that, now that I've made those changes and all, um, let's give old uh, St. Nick a little bit more space on his arm. This part is going to bug me right here. Delete that point and just kind of pull this back down. All right, just giving myself a little bit of adjustment. We got to do that from time to time. Um, we've got to do those adjustments. All right, now with that done, let's go back in our selection mode and let's offset, offset these two vectors inward again, uh, that eighth of an inch. And we're going to go back into our quarter inch pocket cut here. Uh, since we've created some new offsets in our vectors and we're going to calculate that once again. Uh, let's reset our preview. Let's go to our regular outside vectors here. Um, oops, didn't want to do that. Uh, let's go to our regular outside vectors here and we're going to revisit our bowl cut and we're going to calculate that toolpath. And then we're going to come in and revisit our round over with the same two vectors. We're going to calculate that again. So let's preview all the tool paths and let's see where we end up. Um, then after this, we'll do the profile cut. We'll round over the outside edge of the profile cut. Um, and then we will, uh, move on. All right. All right. What we're getting is that difference, that difference between here and here. Uh, when we did our offset, that's what we're getting there. Uh, let's see here. Pretty much resolved all the other issues on the wrist there. So let's take, uh, I, I want to really clean that one up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to go into node editing and I'm just basically going to cut the vector here. I'm going to cut the vector here I'm going to delete that I'm going to come in and join with a smooth curve and I'm going to go into node editing because that smooth curve created just this busy curve and I'm going to pull this curve up as much as I can To get as much of that meat all right and I'm just going to recalculate that pocket cut <laughs> after we select both vectors calculate that on both the pockets and if we take a look if we take a look here uh, really didn't help myself too much um, you can see that my blue toolpath really doesn't uh, get up in there uh, there's a small area it cleans out so let's preview that and let's see if it does any adjustment let's preview that Yeah, it didn't do a whole lot uh, for getting rid of that. There's just so many nodes. So many nodes. Um, 
I think what I'll end up doing is uh, being smart about it. I will end up taking a, uh, a small Dremel or something uh, and I will just kind of sand that down and mill that down. Uh, it's not, you know, the ideal way, but um, I don't have a smaller round bowl bit to fit up in there. And I really don't want to keep having to go back and redraw this too much. Um, you know. So I'm going to leave that like it is, and I'll just clean that up on my workbench. It's a small sacrifice that I have to make to clean up on my workbench. Now we're going to do our final profile cut, but before we do our final profile cut, I want to do a, um, I want to do a uh, round over here. And my round over has the ability to plunge and cut. So I'm going to go into my profile toolpath, uh, quarter inch deep uh, with my round over. And I'm going to calculate. I want to be on the outside of the cut this time, the outside of the line. And I'm going to calculate that toolpath. And let's preview it. Okay, so you can see that there. Coming about. Um, me and old Santa. We'll have to we'll have to play around and clean up Santa a little bit, especially on this area. That that's that's driving me nuts visually. It doesn't look good. I wouldn't want it on my dining room table. But let's go ahead and create our final profile cut. And this time we're cutting all the way through our material. Uh, we're going to use a quarter inch end mill to cut all the way through on that outside vector. Uh, I'm going to add some tabs, but not right now because I want you guys to be able to see this cut. And um, I'm taking, yep, 12 passes, an eighth of an inch per pass. And we're going to calculate this. Let's preview that cut. <clears throat> All right. Now, what happened there? Well, when I calculated that cut uh, on the outside of the line, uh, on that profile cut, it cut my round over away because it's cutting you know on that same profile and so I'm losing my round over because why am I losing my round over because on my round over I did not offset inward my eighth of an inch okay I didn't offset inward my eighth of an inch so let's go ahead and preview that round over again and look at there. All right, so this would be a uh, our Santa chip and dip bowl, and um, I would really I think his whole arm here needs to be redrawn. I think this big old lump right here needs to be gone, and his arm just needs to come down here uh, and uh, to clean up these areas. Over here, these two little lips and right here, this nub need to go away. It just needs to be a nice, smooth transition. It doesn't need that little indention right there. So there's a couple of things that we could uh, clean up on this. Uh, this point, this sharp point, uh, doesn't need to be a point. We can give it a nice round over there. Um, we can kind of clean some of these things up. Uh, and remember the bowl cut is cutting on the outside. So it's following this contour here and we can very easily come in and in our node editing, we can clean these things up uh, and giving ourselves, you know, just a little bit cleaner transition same thing here this sharp nub doesn't even need to be there uh, basically pull this back and give ourselves a nice smooth transition even on the inside vector but I'm not even gonna screw with the inside vector right now I'll just let the bowl bit take that out no I'm just kidding we got to screw with it uh, so I don't want you guys being intimidated by nodes so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this here and this here um, right there and there I'm gonna right click and we'll cut the vector there cut the vector there we're gonna take this and delete that and on that we're gonna just join with a nice smooth curve pull that curve in a little bit all right get rid of that 
Uh, the arm here, this whole thing I would redraw. And I'm, I'm doing it right now so you guys can see. Um, all of these points right here, going to delete this one too. And basically, I'm just going to smooth this one out. Delete that point. I'm just going to pull that node down. Delete this point. Pull this node down. And this is where that, you know, bowl bit is, you know, got to go. And uh, we know for a fact that it's, it just can't fit up in there. If I drew my 3 8 inch radius again, you know, we know it can't fit up in there. And that part is what's driving me nuts, making me go back and revisit this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. Uh, so here, I'm going to pull this node up a little bit and pull this out. Pull this node out a bit. I know my ball, uh, my my bit now, my bowl bit will be able to fit in there. Um, it'll be able to get in there and, and clean that area out now. Um, and what I want to make sure of is in node editing, I'm going to take these guys and just kind of bump them in just a little bit. Doesn't matter if his arm is kind of funky skinny. He's still waving at us. You know, um, looks like he has gout, so let's get rid of that. I'm deleting, hitting the letter D on your keyboard deletes points and nodes and everything. I'm deleting these points because I'm just going to end up, you know, uh, getting back to a certain point so I can just kind of smooth things out. All right. Uh, if I wanted to, um, redo now that I've kind of redrawn him if I wanted to re offset my outside half inch just so I get a better contour and shape of what he looks like that's fine you know we're basically kind of starting over in a sense so let's get rid of this let's get rid of this uh, this one might as well get rid of this this one here I'm gonna get rid of that uh, kneecap Okay, and that one I should be okay with, but might as well while I'm here. I'm hitting the letter D to delete these, turning it into an arc, and then just kind of finding that gradual corner. All right, once again, with all of this selected, I'm offsetting outward a half an inch for my lip. Okay, getting rid of these two little pieces of debris right there. With this vector and this vector selected, I'm offsetting inward my eighth of an inch. I'm going to revisit my pocket toolpath on these two inside vectors here. This is my quarter inch end mill. I'm just going to recalculate that. I'm going to open up my bowl cut. These are my outside vectors here. I'm going to recalculate that. My round over bit for the inside is already selected the same vectors. Um, you know, these same vectors, so I'm going to calculate that. And my profile cut on the outside is my new profile. We're going to calculate that. And then my final profile cut, again, this new outside vector, we're going to calculate that. 
So if we were, if we've done any cleanup or anything, if we preview all of these tool paths, then we are finished and we can move on to the next design. Oh my goodness gracious. Might have already been said, but what bowl bit did you use? Wayne, this is the white side 1370, eighth inch radius, three eighth inch diameter, uh, or I'm sorry, seven sixteenths inch diameter uh, bowl and tray bit. Okay, so few areas in all that we cleaned up. I still didn't get rid of those two nubs that I said I wanted to get rid of. Uh, these two points right here, I should have done that uh, like a dumb A. Uh, these these guys right here, I'm just gonna smooth this out to a just a you know a general. Uh, let's go into note editing, and I'm gonna get rid of delete those points. Delete that point. Zoom in. Delete that point. And delete those points. Delete that. Turn this into a Bezier curve and just kind of pull this up. Pull this out. All right, with that, I'm going to re offset it uh, inward an eighth of an inch, and I've got to recalculate that cut and my bowl cut. No, I don't need to recalculate the bowl cut, it's good. Uh, the round over cut is good. I only changed the inside vector, so I only had to recalculate the one. So, um, last time we're previewing this. <laughs> all right, preview all the tool paths. And we should be good. All right, uh, so William uh, FY, the Fruid is the 19102. Uh, Fruid what, a bowl bit or a round over bit, uh, William Edlin? Is the Fruid 19102 a round over or a bowl bit? Those damn nubs are still there. Ain't that something? Maybe I gotta do some recalculating. See that one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah, that's fine. We'll leave it be. We'll leave it be. All right. So hopefully you guys kind of get the concept. Spend some time on yours. Don't be hasty like me. I'm, I'm, I'm speeding up for time's sake and everything. Don't be hasty. Now, uh, of course, if I wanted to uh, not have the divider on the two bowls, I could take the divider out and reconnect these vectors and just have one big open bowl instead of the two separate bowls. Uh, you never know. You may want some uh, chips and candy on one side. I'm not sure. But um, it's another little, um, I don't know if it looks like Santa, but that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, so got a little Santa bowl. Let's focus. Let's go. Let's go now and let's create a new layer here. And let's turn off layer one and let's bring in our reindeer, our deer. Let's see what we can do with this one. Um, let's see what we can do with this. Uh, see if we can get any better luck. Now, this is not a reindeer. It's a, just a regular deer. But uh, I had some ideas for this. So what I want to do is first thing, go into the trace bitmap tool. And we're going to go turn the fading off. 
slide our vector all the way until we get a nice fill, which we do. I'm going to turn my noise filter up just a little bit and preview. Okay. Evidently my noise filter wasn't up high enough or it just may be the vector itself. Preview. All right, we're gonna apply and close. This will give you a good lesson on how to clean up our lines. So the first thing is I wanna ungroup uh, my vectors so I can go through and select these uh, funky vectors that got uh, drawn in here. So all of these little things um, that got drawn. But now look at my vectors. This is from using a poor quality image. Uh, so how would we clean this up if this is what we were using? How would we clean this up to get rid of all these? Well, what we would do is we actually have a tool called Curve Fit Tool. And so if we select our vector here and we go into the Curve Fit Tool, it's the third icon on the third row, um, what we can do is we can adjust our uh, lines and all. So uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to replace the existing vectors or the selected vectors with whatever we draw. And on the tolerance, uh, the higher I make my tolerance, the more it's going to kind of smooth out the lines, I believe that's the case. Um, and so I want to go with a point one right now and we'll see what happens. And I'm going to go with a Bezier curve and click preview and we don't want that, right? Point one is a little bit much. So let's back that up a little bit, Jack. Um, let's go with a 0.0625, too many decimal points. And I'm gonna go with an arc instead of the Bezier curve and let's preview. Okay, still a little funky dory. Still losing it. All right, let's see here. Okay, and a point one's not doing anything for us. So what that means is we're not gonna waste time on it. We're gonna get rid of it. We're gonna go in and we're gonna grab another one, uh, another image. So uh, why waste time on, on something that's gonna give you a, a hard time? So in tools, I'm going to go into the Google tools here to help me uh, and in the Google tools uh, on the size, let's turn them back on, sorry, on the size, I want to have it filter out everything and only show me images that are larger than 800 by 600, okay, 800 by 600 and the, um, from there, uh, I know the images that I have are going to be large uh, quality and, uh, you know, we can kind of go from there. I would like to have a side facing uh, bowl and tray, uh, in a sense, a side facing uh, of the bowl and tray. So what I want to do is I'm going to just peruse real quick and see uh, if there's an, you know, a silhouette that is not going to give me a hard time. This one looks exactly like the one I had. And unfortunately, I can't remember what image I grabbed. So I'm actually going to leave that one alone. Because if I pull in the same picture twice, I'm not going to be a happy camper. Um, so let's go here and let's see what we've got. And I am not... Uh, at all worried about if the body is still attached to the head because I can cut that off and clean it up in Vetric. So let's let's go with this one.
trying to think of what would be an, uh, an interesting looking bowling tray. We'll go with that one. Special designs. All right, save image as. Let's go ahead and get out of here and go back into Vetric. All right, we're going to cancel this tool. We're going to import a uh, bitmap for tracing. We're going to grab this new image. Um, we're going to go ahead and trace bitmap this. I'm going to zoom into it so we can see what's going on here. And let's kind of uh, turn our fading off. I'm going to increase my noise filter, probably about seven. There we go. Click apply, close, and then I'm going to turn off that bitmap layer. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do here now that I have a traced image is uh, let's size this up because what I'd like to do is I want all of this to be uh, kind of meet uh, with just the spikes kind of coming out of the uh, bowl a little bit. Uh, so, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted kind of a side facing um and everything because i'm going to end up kind of redrawing this a little and <clears throat> how we're going to do that is i'm going to use the create boundary create tool and i'm going to offset this boundary that i want to create i'm going to offset it about a quarter of an inch too many decimal points Oops, I didn't want the rubber band on. Let's turn the rubber band off. We'll talk about that one day. Um, and I'm going to take my bowl here. Let's draw a curve. Let me think about how I want to do this. Bear with me a second. Oops. I'm trying to get rid of that curve. All right. What I want is I need a nice curve. I need a nice curve. Oops. I'm in the polyline tool, ladies and gentlemen. Be in the right tool when you want to use it. Be in the right tool. All right, with that arc, I'm going to go into node editing on it and I'm going to actually change it to a busy line because I'd like to pull this over. This one as well. Okay. And now I'm going to do uh, some welding in a sense. Uh, but I want, uh, let's do some trimming instead of welding. So let's trim that away. Let's trim that away. Okay, on this line, I probably want, I probably would like to insert a point here and bring this down a little bit. It'd be nice to see all of the, um, not all the points, but some of the points. This will make sense in a minute what I'm doing. I saw a bowl that I really liked um, that had these openings up here 
they still had some antlers sticking out um, but they didn't waste all this with uh, nothing to cut out there was a place to put some chips and dips uh, so I'm basically I want to try to my best that when this bowl gets trimmed up uh, that it still has some spikes coming out of it so it looks like a deer uh, but there's some pocket area here that we can utilize 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 so what I'm gonna do is I should be able to trim now and before I trim I really want I'd like to get the shape of his ear a little bit more. Whoops. Oh, that might look fugly ugly. But we'll find out. On this one here, I'm not going to have much of a choice. Um, I'm only going to be able to kind of get right in there. I like the busy curve because I can kind of get my transitions somewhat right. I'm just trying to create that that ear point. All right, let's see how ugly this looks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use our trim tool and I'm going to trim. Uh, first of all, before I trim, I have to ungroup. It will not trim on a grouped object. Uh, so I'm going to trim and I should be able to trim this away and get rid of all of that except for my deer outline here. And again, also all of this. And then right here on these antlers, I want to kind of connect all of these little points and it's going to be a chip and dip bowl but uh, we still kind of get that effect of antlers. I don't know how ugly this is going to look but bear with me and this, this will make sense in a minute. Let's offset this inward a half an inch because I'm going to have this as my outside profile. We're going to offset inward 0.5 inches. I'd like a 0.5 inch lip around here. Um, and, uh, let's go, we might have to do a little thinner. Let's go 0 0.375. This is why I wanted that other deer with that head facing sideways. It would have been perfect for what I wanted to do, but because that changed, we have to kind of change our design a little bit. Um, we've got to do what we've got to do. Now on this uh, node editing here, um, let's go ahead and delete some points. Oh my, my, Miss American Pie. Let's see here. I didn't have keep sharp points selected, so I hate that it uh, created all these sharp points. Same thing here. On this span here, a span is a space between two nodes. Oh my, my. Oops, I deleted it. I didn't want to do that. I want to turn it into a busy curve. And let's pull this. That 
that's going to be an ugly bowl, isn't it, guys and girls? You can agree with me on that one. It's not going to be the hottest looking. Um, gum! I wish that other photo wasn't so nasty. Let's see here. Got to trim away. Anytime you have loops in your design, get rid of them. Get rid of them. All right. Here's what I love about the undo button. Maybe. How far back did I go? Let's go back in and open our bitmap open. Let's trace that real quick one more time. Turn that fading off. Turn this up. Apply. Turn that bitmap layer off. I think I'm going to keep the antlers in there. Um... I think I'm actually going to keep the antlers in there and just have this inside area here being the bowl. So let's take a look. If we were to grab this and size this up, if I were to offset this, offset this design outward this time, my half inch that I want. Okay. Um, what I can do is I may leave that bad boy there I'm just gonna round around the edges this one I'm gonna delete okay I'm going to offset I'm gonna offset this inside one inward now inward an eighth of an inch to me this point Um, that's good. On this, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector, right? Well, let's go into node editing first. I'm going to cut the vector here, 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 and just pick a spot, any spot right there. I'm going to get rid of the antlers, this side and this side. I'm going to get rid of this. And let's, uh, let's actually back this up a little bit. I'm going to cut that vector there. And cut it right there. Let's get rid of these little swirl back thingies. And I'm just going to join this with a smooth curve. Not that smooth. We're going to pull that curve back. Okay. And so this lower area is going to be my bowl area. Um, this lower area is going to be my bowl area and I'm going to create an illusion of the deer antlers. So with these vectors as it sits, as it stands right here right now, um, I'm going to take this outside vector and this inside vector here and even Nope, I'm going to leave those empty for right now. And I'm going to do a pocket cut on this. This pocket cut, I'm going to cut down an eighth of an inch. Yep, no problem. Uh, I'm going to cut down an eighth of an inch. Welcome, guys. And I'm going to use my quarter inch end mill to cut that down an eighth of an inch. And this is going to be my, I'll call it so we know where we can keep everything uh, separate. This is going to be my deer 
uh, pocket. I'm just going to call it pocket one. I'll rename these files if I, I'm going to leave these files, give you guys a copy of these. Let's come back in here. And what this should do is this should create a little uh, recess of my profile all the way around. Okay. With me so far? All right. Now, in here, this pocket in this pocket, because I, um, I want to keep them. I don't know why I want to keep them, but I do. Or I don't. Actually, I don't. Those can go bye-bye. Those can be gone. Uh, the inside pocket here, where my chips and dip are going to go, uh, let's go ahead and let's create a pocket toolpath. I'm going to go 0 0.625 deep with it. Uh, quarter inch end mill, we're going to calculate that. Okay, now, now, that's going to leave me with an eighth inch lip right here. That's going to leave me with an eighth of an inch lip. So what I'm going to do That'll be okay. That'll be okay. Uh, the eighth inch will be fine. All right. So with that, uh, I'm going to take this outside. Of, oh, let's see here. Let me look at him. Yep. Okay. I'm going to take this outside vector here, and I'm going to do a profile toolpath on the outside of the cut. Uh, only an eighth of an inch deep, just like uh, I did that pocket. I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit, a 90 degree V bit. Now it's coming together in my mind. I'm going to use a 90 degree V bit, and I, man, I just don't know. I don't know. I doubt I'm going to get any detail on the inside of these antlers. I know I will around here for my chamfer, basically, is what I'm trying to create but I'm not gonna get any detail around here. So let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna come inward. I'm gonna go a negative. Um, I'm gonna go a point oh six. And I'm gonna calculate that toolpath. I'm gonna preview that tool path you know what I I may not need to do that offset inward but let's look at it let's see what happens here okay so I'm getting the chamfer I'm still I am getting chamfer around here Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna, I'm gonna create a new layer for my chamfer cut. Since both my profile, since if we undo, if we reset this preview and we look at this uh, deer uh, pocket, this first one. Um, well, that's the chamfer, hold on a second. Let's reset that again. Deer pocket. If we look at this, my bits only coming into here okay and so and uh and everything so this actual profile is what i'm wanting to uh cut on and if i go if i look at my tool path if i open this up On that pocket I can see where my bits getting to and where it's not getting to right you see that you see all the blue area here and I want my chamfer basically to follow that same path I don't necessarily need my chamfer to come down in here 
or down in here. Um, I don't necessarily need it to come down into these uh, inner points. If we were to look at that chamfer cut, uh, you know, it's getting down into these. What? So it might be a good thing that's getting down in there, but it can't get right here. Uh, so uh, I'm getting this funky looking little uh, round thing there. So let's uh, let's make this buck. Uh, let's kind of uh, take away some of his points. What do you say? All right. So node editing. Node editing. I'm going to cut the vector here. Cut it here. I'm going to remove that point and I'm going to connect that with a smooth line. Okay. Uh, over here. I'm going to cut the vector here and then I'm going to come down. I'm just going to pick a spot right about here and cut the vector. Get rid of that. Join this with a smooth curve. Okay. Um, let's see here. So that'll allow that to get into there. All right. Here, I don't need uh, it to go right way back in here. I mean, if we look at uh, the V cut, if we looked at that profile V cut um, and what it did, I mean, it does give us a bit of definition right here in the ear, but what I don't like is it leaves this center area there. Now, if I was using an eighth inch end mill to do this little pocket area, I'm gonna get much more detail so that's a thought too, because it's just cutting an eighth of an inch deep, but it is a smaller bit. It's going to be a longer run, but that would clean up all of this area here. And, um, and if I reduce my offset quite a bit, uh, I could get a better look as well. So let's do that. Let's do a couple of things guys. And sorry, I, I didn't have any of this stuff prepared. This is all on the fly. Um, and this is what designing is all about. And we're almost done. Okay, so I've, I've reduced his his points, so he's uh, now a seven point buck instead of a nine point that he was, and um, I'm not going to get any bit down in here on this ear, so I'm going to go into node editing, and I'm just going to uh, cut the vector here, cut the vector there, and I'm going to get rid of this piece. And I'm just going to join this with a smooth curve, okay? And I, that curve is going to be a little tight. So in node editing, uh, we'll just kind of open it up a little bit. Okay. All right. We are cranking with gas now. On this profile here... I'm going to, uh, let's get out of node editing. On this profile here, if I offset inward three-eighths of an inch instead of the full half, okay, that gives me That gives me not what I want. So we'll delete that. Let's go in there and let's do this now. Deer pocket. My deer pocket is going to be this profile or this vector and this vector here. I am going to change it. I am actually going to let the runtime run a little bit longer and I'm going to use my eighth inch end mill. If you don't have an eighth inch end mill, then. Um, you know, just use uh, 316 so you can get those at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, let's calculate this. All right, so looking at my toolpath, see, it's going to be able to get in there. That eighth inch bit's going to be able to get in there and clean that up. 
So let's go ahead and preview that selected toolpath. This is going to be a little pocket, basically kind of giving me a little bit of definition around my... Um, yes, I could. Um, I could take out uh, these antlers here and put a area for a bowl yes wing. Um, I could, I could, uh, I could, I could put a bowl area right here and that may be a good idea, uh, for sure. Um, putting a bowl area right there. Why waste all that? Um, I do want to leave a couple of the, the spikes and antlers maybe. Let's, uh, let's look at our profile cut. Cutting on the outside of the line. I'm not going to step over 0.06, just very ever so slightly. Let's go. Uh, a 32nd of an inch step over 3125 or 0.03 is fine and calculate that okay all that's doing instead of using my round over bit it's just giving me a nice little chamfer here it's just kind of breaking the edge that's all it's doing for me if I increase that step over if I said if I wanted to go point oh five negative point oh five if i increase that step over uh that's just bringing that chamfer in more you see that there okay just depends on all i'm doing is giving myself some definition uh with that i'm gonna take this area here um <clears throat> i'm actually going to since i have this nice uh I'm going to delete this and I'm going to take an offset this inward instead of that eighth of an inch. I'm going to give myself a little bit of meat here. Uh, let's see what 375 does. Uh, let's go. I'm going to go 0.27, all right, and I'm going to get rid of uh, that little debris there, get rid of this debris, oh, not that one, that debris right there, and let's clean this up a bit. Uh, I'm just going to go into node editing mode, somebody's calling me, and cut the vector here. And I'm just going to connect that with just a smooth curve because this is kind of the bowl area and stuff. So I'm just, I don't need any points and things. And I'm going to take and lower that curve down a little bit. Just a nice, subtle curve. <clears throat> okay. On here. I don't need this dip coming in here. So basically I'm going to Well, maybe that that might be not not too bad. All right, let's create a toolpath on it and let's see. Okay, not too bad. All right, now somebody mentioned about uh, bowl and tray area here. Well, this would be a perfect place for a dipping bowl right here in this void. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's see what we can get here. Uh, So what is that diameter? That is a 1.6, 1 1.6, 1 1.5. Let's go 1.5 inch diameter. What's a 2? Let me see what 2 looks like. 
Okay, we're gonna go two. And what we're gonna do is node edit, we're gonna take and cut the vector here. Cut it there. Over here, same thing. We're going to cut right about here and here. That will let me get rid of these two. And then I'm going to join with a smooth curve twice. And on this one, if I move the bowl up just a little bit will be good all right so <clears throat> oops all right let's go back into our pocket toolpath let's add that in uh, I probably could uh, you know I'm wanting something round for like a round dish there that's why it's round um, Let's reset our preview. Let's get our pocket cut. Let's preview that uh, toolpath. Okay. Let's look at our uh, pocket cut for our deer. Okay. Let's look at our chamfer cut. And of course, we got to recalculate these tool paths. Because those vectors were redrawn. And let's see what we end up with. And we still got to do the profile cut. I'm not sure about a bowl cut on this. Uh, I, I know right now as it stands, if I do a bowl cut on the inside of this, uh, my I don't think my bowl bit's going to fit into this ear right here. Um, but I still want to have some nice uh, edges and everything, so let's go ahead and do it uh, on these two vectors here. We're going to do a profile cut. 0.625 deep <clears throat> with my bowl bit I don't think it's gonna help me it's not gonna it's not gonna do it on the inside of the cut Not gonna do it. up a little bit more of a step over okay now my pocket cut should be 0.625 and My bowl cut be 0.625. Let's go point because of the round over. Let's give myself uh, 
All right, so looking at that, I don't want that. So it's got to be 0.625. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what that lip is there. All right, so we're we're nearly there. Okay, pocket cut. Bowl cut is going to kind of back up a little bit. And I step in move the other point above the bowl up a little okay I will you talking about um, the point up here I will give me just one minute Wayne that's a good idea uh, let's step over So that will give me my transition. All right. Now, Wayne was saying that the antler up here, take this guy and move him up a little bit. Um, Hold your shift key down will allow you to select nodes. All right, if we recalculate Recalculate. I could click the recalculate button, but it would recalculate all the Santa um, profiles too because it's in the same job. If we preview this. We're almost there, guys. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, I would want to, let's do a profile cut. Let's get it cut out. Let's get our silhouette cut out. We're gonna cut uh, all the way through, inch and a half material. We're gonna use our quarter inch end mill, cutting on the outside of the line. Uh, no offset, we're gonna calculate this. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, kind of let's see if we can smooth off some of those edges. I know when I round this one over, it's going to be not a good idea. Let me leave that one off for a minute. All right, stepping down a quarter of an inch uh, with our roundover bit, uh, offsetting inward. The software knows that I have an outside vector and an inside vector, so it'll automatically reverse that for me. We'll go ahead and calculate that and preview that selected toolpath to round over that outside edge. Kind of. Uh, Let's 
smooth it out. Let's turn that off for a minute. Let's do that one more time. I probably need to go in a positive direction, but let's find out. I do, looking at my solid view on that. No. Oh, ha. <laughs> Uh, guys, we pocketed down. We got to start at an eighth of an inch. We pocketed down that eighth of an inch. Please remember that uh, so we can um, calculate that. That outside pocket area was pocketed down an eighth of an inch to give that kind of raised effect. Um, always forget that step. Okay, so there's our round over. On the bowl... Uh, it didn't work, so let's go in here and deselect that because we're going to create a new, a new same profile cut this time on the inside of the line, stepping over that 0.125 negative. Don't you give me a hard time. We got to start at an eighth of an inch. <laughs> start at an eighth of an inch, Lane. All right. Moving too fast. Moving too fast. Okay, now. Start at an eighth of an inch. Recess an eighth of an inch. Negative on the inside of the cut. Uh, calculate. Why is that not rounding over hmm ha 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 Stand by a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I've got a dilemma. I've got an eighth of an inch start depth because that's where it's pocketed down to. Cutting down a quarter of an inch for the round over. Um, stepping over that eighth of an inch, as I can see here for that round over. Yet, I'm not getting that round over. So let's reset the preview. Just make sure... Nothing got screwed up. Dear pocket, pocket, profile, profile. All of these guys right here. Profile those visible toolpaths and let's see what we've what we got. There's the bowl bit. Profile cut, which is in the wrong spot. It's got to be at the end. Um, still not getting that round over. Still not getting that. Move the point above the bowl up a little. Yes, okay. Um, I still got to, I'll fix these lower points too. But I'm still not getting that round over on the inside here. Let's find out why not. Um, <clears throat> with this vector... I want to be on the inside of that profile. Inside. I want to step over negative 0.125 where my round over bit. Starting at 0.125 and cutting 0.125. Because if I look at my 3D cut and I put my mouse here. I'm an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch down. Why, oh why, oh why is it not giving me my desired result?
All right, let's turn. I don't think it would be a positive. It's got to be a negative because looking at <clears throat> that's got to be a negative. I calculated the wrong one. Bear with me, gentlemen and ladies. If I make that a positive, see it's moving inward, away from. So that's not that's not what I want. I want it to be a negative. If anybody sees something that I don't, let me know. Uh, starting at an eighth of an inch, cutting to a quarter. Cutting down a quarter. Offsetting negative 0.125. Where are we today, guys and girls? Um, I don't want to be on the outside of that line. I want to be on the inside. I'm going to give myself a little bit more of a start depth just to see. I just want to see if that makes a difference. Oh. I know why I know why because my round over bit brought me out to here that's why my round over bit brought me out to here so that's exactly why all right so 0.125 start depth. I need to offset this circle outward an eighth of an inch. That's what I need to calculate on. To get that rounded edge. Now, to clean this circle up, what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, offset it inward an eighth of an inch instead of outward. And the tool path, my bowl bit cut, we're going to actually create the bowl bit cut on this vector. So that way it cuts out to this line. And on my pocket cut, we're going to do the pocket cut on this vector so it cuts uh, in there. <clears throat> Cleaning that up. And then for the profile cut of that, uh, we're going to do it on this line here with the round over bit. All right, so let's let's go over real quick what we just did. So for our pocket cuts, uh, cutting out our deer pocket here uh, around the outer perimeter, around the outer perimeter, uh, this deer pocket here is uh, going to be cutting down to an eighth of an inch. Then the pocket cut here is going to be doing the inside pockets of that deer to this 0.625 inches deep. From there, I've got a little chamfer cut with a 90 degree V-bit just to give me a little definition in, on my edges and things. Um, and then I've got a round over. No, I'm sorry, that's the bowl bit. I got my bowl bit doing some cutting. And then my Profile cut. This needs to be moved to the back of the list because that's the last cut to be made. Uh, and then I've got a round over and another round over. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Preview all of these.
visible tool pass and we should have a decent pretty decent looking bowl but maybe the two little nubs on the antlers uh, going into the bowl on the round over that might that might not be it might not look good but that's actually okay it's not too bad okay now the only thing that hasn't been done or haven't done is rounding over this edge here now when I, if I round over this edge then this is going to virtually make this chamfer and everything go away um, I think in this case I would just break the inside edge with some sandpaper uh, instead of rounding it over the full eighth of an inch I just break the edge with some sandpaper and uh, you know be done I don't know any of you guys into deer and all that stuff who would have a uh, chip and dip bowl tray like this in their man cave or, or house show of hands uh, the flat depth uh, William uh, the flat depth is 0.625 inside the main pocket here uh, but at the top surface here it's an eighth of an inch you know it's bringing it down an eighth of an inch just to get some definition out of the kind of the outer profile though the flat depth is an eighth of an inch on the outside 0 0.625 0 0.625 inches on the inside the flat depth is on the chamfer, the 90 degree chamfer, the flat depth is an eighth of an inch. We're cutting a 90 degree chamfer down to this level here and everything. But I would break the surface on the inside edges with some sandpaper. Uh, if I did the round over, then I'm going to lose this lip here unless I took this vector and kind of offset it outward a little further out giving myself a smaller lip area right here which would be fine too I could definitely do that I could get away with uh, offsetting this out another quarter of an inch and only have a 3 8 inch lip here or a quarter of an inch lip instead of a half inch lip but okay so now with that, uh, the very last one, guys, uh, what you saw at the beginning of the show was our joy. Uh, so what I've done here, just real quick, to, to uh, similar to the deer, is uh, we've got the letter joy, the word joy. I typed in the word joy. Uh, the vectors for the word joy were offset outward, offset outward, a half an inch. Okay, these three selected letters were offset outward a half an inch to create this outer profile. From there, this outside profile was selected and using the boundary create tool with a rubber band boundary selected for another distance of a half an inch, that creates this kind of rubber band boundary around our entire design. That's how we get this profile. So we start off with the simple word joy. I use just a uh, basic, let's look and see what um, font I used. <clears throat> An Arial Black uh, font to create the word joy. And we can do it right now just like we did. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and delete this. And with that Arial Black, font capital J O Y um, let's actually create let's actually make sure that our layer is active when we're working in it but um, once again Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, once this uh, letter joy, the word joy was created, uh, then I took my fillet tool and with a eighth inch radius, because I'd be using a quarter inch end mill, uh, we went through and radius these corners. Um, 
Now, first of all, before we can do that, the text has to be converted to a editable curve. And we do that by converting to curves, this T with the nodes. Now with our fillet tool, we're able to access and round over edges and things. So what I'm going to do is because I'm using a 3 8 inch round over bit in here, I want my radius on the inside to be 0.1875, actually not an eighth of an inch. And I want to radius these two corners or these corners. Same thing on the Y, here and here, here and here, and down at the bottom. I'm not going to radius this corner. I'm going to leave that sharp. Uh, you know, I don't want it to look like that, so I'm going to leave that sharp. From there, these three uh, letters were selected, except for this, and we create an offset outward a half an inch okay to get this boundary from there this boundary was selected while it was selected using the create boundary tool creating a half inch boundary with the rubber band boundary selected we create this profile all right now the tool pass for this just like we did with the deer, these two outside profiles right here are going to be selected and it's going to be a pocket cut of an eighth of an inch. 0.125, too many decimal points. And this is the last project for the evening. This is going to, if we reset this preview, this is going to give us this pocket around our outer text. We're going to then take our inside text Hold down your shift key when you're selecting more than one vector and select the inside of the O this time. This is going to be pocket cut 0.625 with a quarter inch end mill. Um... I want to round off the inside edges of this one. So before I create that pocket cut, let's go offset and let's offset inward. Um, an eighth of an inch. And what this offset is, is this offset, this, this offset here is just for our rough cut with our quarter inch end mill to hog away the waste material. Okay. So we're going to use our quarter inch end mill. We're going to hog away our waste material in here. And then we're going to use our regular vectors to do our bowl cut. That way we can get that radius. And the reason why we're offsetting it inward is because if we go all the way to the edge, then we're not, the radius of that bit is not going to, we're not going to get that round radius at the bottom of the bowl. So on our regular vectors we're going to do a profile cut on the inside of this cut here cutting down that 0.625 with our bowl bit on the inside of the cut okay we're going to calculate that and that's going to give us that nice rounded bottom edge in our cut. Okay. Now the outside of joy here, we're going to do a profile cut on this with a 90 degree V bit, an eighth of an inch deep, the same depth that we cut that pocket. And the 90, and I just like the chamfer. We're going to do a chamfer, um, a small little chamfer. Now we're going to step that 90 degree bit in. We're going to cut on the outside of the line, but we're going to step that bit in uh, just a 0.06. Just 
through five sixteenth of an inch so that we get a nice so that bit is moved shifted over and we get a nice chamfer around that edge okay just a nice chamfer on the inside of our bowl vector the the far inside or not the far inside, but our, our main letters, not the offset for the that was our rough cut for our end mill, but our actual letters, Joy, we're going to do a round over, a profile cut on the top edge of these, cutting a quarter of an inch deep with our round over bit, our little eighth inch round over. And we're stepping over an eighth of an inch. We're gonna be on the inside inside of the line and that's going to give us our round over on the inside of our letters and then finally we're going to do a profile cut all the way through our material with a quarter inch end mill cutting on the outside of the line and we would add tabs to hold this part in but I'm not going to add tabs for preview purposes I'm going to preview this cut we're going to create this joy but I don't want the edge being all rough and everything so before that profile cut we're going to add one more one more profile cut but this time again, only cutting a quarter of an inch deep with the round over bit, stepping over that eighth of an inch, 0.125. We're gonna calculate this and we're gonna make sure that this is an, an up above the actual cutout of the profile. We wanna do the little round over first and we would run those two round over bits, the inside and the outside, they use the same tool so we would save them as one file so it does both. And that way we get that round over cut. But we remember on that round over cut uh, for that profile we have to start at an eighth of an inch. And for our final profile cut, we also start at an eighth of an inch. Well, no, let's leave that one starting at zero because there's an outside material there. But so what this does is now this is going to be a bigger kind of centerpiece, chip and dip bowl. But um, it gives us, you know, a tray. Now, I would like to have a lot more room in here. And I would love to carve away the center area. Uh, you know, I think this would probably be a candy dish more. It depends on how big it is, you know, before a chip bowl. Um, and so candy could go around there. I personally, I, I, I'd be kind of debating with myself if I would want to cut out the center of the circle or leave it be. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, like just get rid of it so I have this big bowl area right here. You know, that would be a kind of a toss up for me. But, and that gives us just a nice little holiday, uh, you know, uh, bowl. And then, of course, we could do a little bit of, um, let's add a little bit of text in here. And if I go to the world. And let's make this a lot smaller. <clears throat> well, bear with me a second. Don't you give me a hard time. All right, let's uh, let me get a, a font here. I'm going to, for this font, I'm going to use a monotype Corsiva. And I want it to be bold. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm going to go, instead of point, I'm going to go 0.375. 
right about there and I'll get it in position and then we'll just simply do a V carve no flat depth 60 degree V bit or 90 if I'm going to be using my 90 so I can save them together but we would calculate that and you know whatever little message we wanted to add in there but of course remember we have to start an eighth of an inch down because that area has been pocketed away always remember that or else you're going to go where in the world did my letters go you know whatever little message if you wanted to you didn't you wouldn't have to had to but you got all this space here you could draw little christmas trees or whatever you wanted um be mindful that we are we do have a round over happening right around this edge so don't be too close to that edge. Um, we could probably, you know, move this up over here or, you know, wherever you wanted it or just not have it at all. Uh, but it's just something a little bit, you know, different. Whatever you wanted to do to embellish this in any way you could. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's stop here. It's 9:39. We've been at it for a couple hours, uh, and let's go back. And there's a lot of tool paths. You got to remember, there's three projects worth of tool paths over on this uh, tool path view over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up, and I'll organize them, and I'll organize layers and stuff for those three designs, and I'll clean up Santa a little bit more. But let's go ahead and see if we have any questions. Do we have any questions? Um, any questions that uh, you guys had and girls have? Um, the white side 1370 bits, uh, you can buy them on Amazon. Uh, you can also, they are available at digitalwoodcarver.com in our store. Um, you can buy them from us if you wanted to. The 1370 white side bowl bits. It's a nice little bowl bit, uh, eighth inch radius uh, bowl bit, uh, seven sixteenths inch wide, three eighths of an inch cutting depth. Um, <clears throat> or cutting flute, should I say. But uh, it's nice for these types of projects, uh, these bold types of projects. And, um, you know, I'd recommend one. Uh, so you can you can experiment with some chips and dips and bowls and trays. And remember, I said uh, the chips and dips bowl tray bits that we did last year, that we did last year, um, like this football tray or the angel tray, uh, the Christmas tree and everything. Uh, those files are available for download on digitalwoodcarver.com uh, in the training section at the very end of the very bottom of the page uh, of the training section, you'll see chip and dip bowls, the heading for chip and dip bowls and you'll see uh, the Vetric for Desktop Pro and Aspire, the downloads for them. There's uh, five, four or five bowls there. A Christmas tree, a football, a pumpkin, a, um, a ghost, and I believe a snowman, I think it was, or something like that. So keep that in mind too. And then you can add to your collection the Santa, the deer, and the joy. You know? So uh, play around, have some fun, make some bowls, make some bowls. Now, uh, it probably got confusing with the offsets and this and that and, and everything. And just so you know, the reason why we're offsetting uh, this vector inward, that eighth of an inch, is because all of this area between, um, <clears throat> between this here, these two vectors here, uh, this is going to be waste material milled out with the quarter inch end mill instead of the bowl bit having to mill all of this out. We're going to hog away this waste with our quarter inch end mill. Uh, all of this waste in here, these inside vectors. 
so that our bowl bit doesn't have to work that hard when it comes and mills that remaining eighth of an inch around the inside of the, you know, our normal vectors. Uh, so that's why we've offset inward. Um, the rubber band boundary is a great boundary for, especially if you're doing things like V-carve inlays or what have you, but to create a boundary around an object, if I were to take this object right here, this outside vector, and use that create boundary tool without the rubber band and I offset uh, it outward, it's just gonna create this shape that you see here. It's just all it's doing is just following the, the design of the joy and it's creating that shape, which would be fine. You could use that as your bowl border and all. What I simply did was uh, on this vector here, just use the rubber band boundary and it's like stretching a rubber band around this whole project. So it's gonna stretch that rubber band around that whole project. And uh, that just gives us a border outline. So um, there you go. Now, uh, Howard, how do you flip your work when you're on on work on a workpiece, uh, how do I flip my work? Are you talking about like a two-sided job flip, or how do you flip your work when you're on a workpiece? Like for instance, when we were talking about Santa here, um, let's turn Santa back on for a moment. Now Santa's 14 inches tall. Let's let's look at exactly how big old Santa was. Let's turn off Joy to the World down here. Uh, Santa was uh, 10 wide by 12 tall. And so uh, instead of a, the 14 inches that I have here, I would just have, make sure I've got at least uh, 12 inches on the lengthwise. And I would select my entire design here, my entire design, and I would rotate rotate off of the center of him 90 degrees and this would allow me to use a smaller board imagine now I wouldn't change my job size for this but I just use a smaller board and my board would probably be you know 11 and a quarter you know like a 1 by 12 uh, or, or something and let me get Santa centered on here. Okay. And so I would rotate him 90 degrees because this is how I'd be clamping. My 11 and a quarter would be along my Y and my 14 inches would be along my X. And so I would rotate him 90 degrees to fit on there. And then of course, now that I've rotated him, uh, I would go through and recalculate the tool pass. And in this case, um, let's see if I can take for a moment. Let me get rid of all of these since I'm talking about Santa. And so I would recalculate all of the tool paths for Santa so that the tool paths get rotated properly too uh, for the rotation and everything. So that way when he is um, getting cut out, he's getting cut out on the orientation of the way I've got my board orientated. So hopefully that's the question. Yeah, so I use for my chip and dip bowls, uh, I either use a mineral oil beeswax combination, uh, a mixture of uh, mineral oil bees and beeswax, uh, or I use a um, salad bowl finish, like a, a Watco brand salad bowl finish and everything. I still want to clean Santa up a little bit, but... You know, that would be my Santa bowl. And I would cut him out along the X-axis, you know, the way I'm clamping my board. Um, 
But the salad bowl finish, uh, if we were to pull up a, there's a lot of different finishing things. Uh, bees, uh, mineral oil and beeswax is a, a great finish, uh, but for a salad bowl finish, uh, one of the brands that I use a lot uh, is this Watco Butcher Block. But General Finishes also has a salad bowl finish. General Finishes makes a great finish. Uh, but this is what I use. I purchase it from Lowe's. Uh, it's the Butcher Block uh, finish. You know, it's food safe. Uh, safe for food contact. There's multiple uses. Cutting boards, Butcher Blocks, salad bowls, and more. Um, but uh, General Finishes has a, uh, a great uh, salad bowl finish. Now... I'm only able to uh, get general finishes from one place in Ocala, Florida. Uh, so, um, you know, it all depends on which one, which where I'm closer to. Am I going to go to Lowe's or am I going to run across town? Now, the beeswax uh, mineral oil finish, uh, I buy beeswax online uh, and then I mix it in with mineral oil. Uh, melt down the beeswax and uh, mix it in with mineral oil. I buy the beeswax almost like you see here in, in the, these uh, blocks. Uh, uh, like you see in this image here. And it comes in a block, uh, gets melted down and mixed with mineral oil. And then I have little cupcake pans that I let it solidify again up into. And I use those little... Uh, those little discs uh, to uh, rub on my finish and all. Um, but a, you know, there's quite a bit of options and everything. But a salad bowl finish or a food safe finish you definitely want to use with chip and dip trays. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Any other questions? Let's see here. Um, will you ever demo techniques in the shop, like doing a whole project from clamping to touch off to the completed part? Absolutely. Uh, Larry, I surely will. Now that we are uh, getting into the winter months, um, it's easier for me to get into my shop and it's not so hot and sweaty and, and everything because it gets into the hundreds of 12 and 100 and so degrees in my shop during the summer. So yeah, I will be in the shop more and I do have Wi-Fi out there. So uh, now, of course, you're not we're not going to sit there and watch uh, a project carve for however many hours from start to finish. Uh, absolutely not. That's that that you know that would make people unsubscribe in a heartbeat to my channel. We're not going to sit there and just watch the CNC run. Uh, but you know the job set up. You know, clamping it down, clamping the material down, the bit and everything. Um, you know, uh, but we'll definitely do more work in the shop. But we're not actually going to carve projects uh, live. In, at least live. At least I won't. If I was pre-recorded, that I could edit out uh, the the milling uh, scenes and everything. Then yes, I'll do that as well. But live, we wouldn't sit there and watch a project run. Um, all right, let's see here. What finish would you put on? And then since food will be... In, okay, we just talked about that. Uh, salad bowl finish or a beeswax mineral oil finish um, is my, my two finishes of choice. All right. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, you know, they, you know, probably not the best little uh, graphics and designs and all, but uh, I'll clean them up making interesting little bowls out of them, but you got all kinds of things, you know, you can make uh, bowls, uh, shapes of, you know, um, if you're poker players and all for poker night, you can do the ace, I'm sorry, not the ace, but the hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs, you know, for uh, your little chip and dip bowls. Uh, holidays, you know, candy canes are always exciting, uh, shaped bowls, uh, snow globes, uh, Santas and reindeer and snowmen. So keep all that in mind for Halloween, pumpkin-shaped bowls and stuff, uh, football, baseball. So keep all those things in mind and make yourself some bowls, chip and dip bowls. I'd love to see some photos of them. 
and mix it up uh, with 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 some variety, guys and girls. This last thing I'm going to say: mix up your bowls with some variety, some different species of wood. So if I were to come in here and type in chip and dip bowl. I were to type chip and dip bowl. Uh, how about wood chip and dip bowl? As soon as someone, uh, let's see here, uh, CNC. Let's uh, keep that uh, to a minimum. Uh, let's see here. What is it? Uh, chip and dip bowl. Chip and dip bowl. Wood chip and dip bowl. All right. All right. So, you know, mixing species. Uh, for instance, uh, here's a good example. Um, different layers. You know, this is, uh, I would say, probably a cherry, maple cherry uh, type chip and dip bowl. You know, some different species in there. So mix it up. Um, you know, here's another, here's a, probably a top view of something similar, you know, mixing up the species, give yourself a little bit of character to that. Um, the, you know, have some fun with it, um, uh, mix it up with the species and everything, the designs and stuff, uh, glue up some panels, laminate some little scrap wood together. Uh, here's an example of, uh, you know, some probably little scrap pieces, you know, glued together uh, to create some unique bowls and stuff. So keep that in mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, mahalo, uh, Larry from Hawaii. Thank you for uh, joining. And um, hopefully this was get, um, get, gives you some inspiration and all. And I know for you guys and girls that have been with me since the beginning, uh, we did, we did, you know, digital wood carver customers. We did our bowl and chip and dip bowl trays last year and stuff. I just wanted to revisit because it's an interesting and fun projects we can do with it. A lot of different shapes and designs and everything. Um, and, uh, it just gives our new customers and all a chance to kind of see, um, what they can do, what they can make. All right. Until next time, guys, y'all have a wonderful night. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Uh, enjoy the holiday, and until next time, I will see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.